is the Big O Show. All right, we are ready to get into a little edge. Let's see if Marcel Louis-Jacques brings the edge like the drink he represents every single time here on the program. Every time. Dot com. And remember, use our code Big O to get 10% off the finest energy drink on the planet. Delicious, smooth, and zero aftertaste. MyEdgeDrink.com. All right. It was ugly. You know, listen, it's not a big but it certainly looked like Mona Lisa. So, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. But a win is a win. Yeah. I don't know about Mona Lisa, but a win is a win. Is a win. A win is a win. You're going to tell me that that win did not look like Mona Lisa because that was an ugly woman. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you meant like you got, no, you got, as no, far no. as like pure quality wise. I'm not out here going to judge Mona Lisa. I don't know Mona. But uh, no, that was a. Uh, but you never saw the painting. I see. I know what you're talking. We're 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 on the we're on the wavelength now. We're on the same wavelength now. Okay. okay. No, okay. that was hard. That was hard to watch at times, man. That was that was hard to watch at times. Um, Imagine you know, watching the first three painting her for eight hours. I'm gonna paint like, that for eight hours. Ugh. After the first three series, you really thought, you know, this might be a blowout. And I even tweeted out, man, like I had the Dolphins by multiple scores, by two scores. I was like, that might not be enough. That might not be enough. But they never built on the first three series. They never built on the first three series. I thought personally, look, to a stat line, it's gonna look, it looks fine. It, it, it looks fine on the surface, right? If you didn't watch oh, the he game, was, you he see. Was, he was off. He was off today. Yeah, 21-35, 261 and a touchdown, 92-7 QBR. It's, it's it's you look at the stat box the box score oh yeah he must have had a pretty a pretty okay game right now he was clearly off he he was clearly off well, he has some rust he needs to shake off should have thrown four interceptions the, I mean and I don't mean should have thrown like oh that was a bad pass that there that was that was just a little bit uh away from the defender no four as in you know <laughs> these guys showed why they're playing defense. They dropped that ball so bad. Oh no, yeah. So the you know, it, Steelers suck, and uh, and they showed was, why they suck. And uh, you know, it's it's a little disappointing because this is not a good Pittsburgh pass rush. It's not really a good secondary as well. Uh, it's yeah. one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. Uh, there were chances there. Uh, there there were opportunities there. It felt, you know, like he came back from the injury last year, and it felt like he was on. I mean, I think best two game stretch of his career still to this day. But uh, tonight it felt like he was trying to press the issue on a couple of occasions. Uh, there were some windows that, you know, he didn't need, he didn't need to try to hit. Uh, there were some decisions he didn't need to try to make. Uh, you know, with the exception of, I, I actually liked the deep ball to Tyreek on third and three. A better pass, yeah, was, a better was, ball, and that's a touchdown. It was late. It was late. Yeah. That's all. It was late. But it was late. And I, I, I put out a video, if you go look at it, the little hop and the pat is exactly what delayed him on all that. He had to make the drop, plant, and throw instead of he had a little hop and a pat. That hop and the pat allowed – that's another couple steps, and that's where he had to release it a little sooner. And that's all timing, dude. Every There was so many plays that he was just off. You could tell 24 days off, and he just was – you know, as I've said before, when you don't have a gun – and you're a timing quarterback, it's kind of something you have to recalibrate again now. And he has to recalibrate the NFL game speed with his arm, and the anticipatory skills have to kind of be readjusted. And they were off. And that's what you could tell. Those anticipatory skills were just off. And those just off almost ended in turnovers or incompletes. That's what it yeah, ended up happening. So so that was my that was my big takeaway from the game is that you know Tua still has some rust he needs to knock off before this offense is back. Like Tua is he's back on the field. He's got a couple you know maybe another week of practice. I think this was his first full speed week of practice since week three. Uh, he just has a couple of those things to to shore up on. Uh, I like what Sean Cooper said here. He needs to recalibrate a little bit. There were certain times where you know like the. Uh, Tyreek's going to get credited for a drop because the ball hit his hands. Uh, and he, he probably deserves it because of a little stutter he took out of his break there. And I think it was the first quarter. But uh, I, I think 
Tyreek expected the ball right out of his break. And that's when he didn't get it. That's what triggered the slowdown. And I think that's just a timing issue between him and Tua, communication issue between him and Tua. Uh, that, you know, it'll get worked out once they get that chemistry and rhythm back. Um, the good news is, you know, I know that you guys, y- y'all love it when I look ahead, right? You love it when I look ahead after a win. The good news is the uh, the Lions are quite literally the worst defense in the NFL. Statistically, they are the worst defense in the NFL. If you're going to get it right, you're going to go get it right at four field. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, uh, but you should have gotten it right against these guys too, right? I mean, you know, this is a terrible team you're also playing, but again, I think the quarterback being off. Now, how did how did McDaniel respond to Tua taking contact again? And I, and I by the way, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I played the video. Did I play the video for you of uh, high school Tua? Did I don't I, think so. I, oh, okay, well, high school Tua said his dad got really pissed at him. And would even reprimand him and all that. And so his dad never got to him. His coach never reached him in Saban. So is his wife or McDaniel going to reach him? Because, dude, you're fresh off getting slammed and out for 24 days. And in two instances, you went and took, took contact for no reason at all. You still haven't learned how to slide. And to me, that is disappointing because you don't – it's all top gun. Okay, son, your ego is writing checks. Your body can't cash. Did you see the original Top Gun? Yes. Okay, so you remember when the bald guy was talking to Maverick and he said, son, your ego's writing checks. Your body can't cash. That's exactly what two is doing right now because he's not like Cam Newton to be doing shit like that. It's kind of it's interesting that like so listening to the Maria Taylor interview. Uh, when she brought up when they brought up his, his parents' reaction, I got the sense, and tell me if I'm crazy here, Chad. I, I got the sense that his parents. Oh, well, you know, you ever seen? You ever been watching like YouTube, and right when it's coming to that main scene, it goes to like that second <laughs> six second commercial break. That's yeah, exactly that was that one. That what just happened right now with Marcel? <laughs> Oh, my bad. I got a call. I put it on D&D, though, so hopefully we're done with that. But uh, I got the sense that to his parents uh, asked him to reevaluate his football career. That is that's the sense that I got with how hard they took it, you know, seeing him hospitalized like that. Uh, So they're not of course, they're not going to be happy. He's a grown man. There's only so much they could do. But of course, they're not going to be happy there. Uh, Mike McDaniel kind of admit like no that's not really what i wanted him to do either i will be advising him to slide but that uh he said the tool told him like sorry coach i I needed that all right bro like you needed it then you needed it i'm not going here and sit here and tell you what you need and don't need it but i i I will tell you i'll tell you what man you playing like you were not just hospitalized last time you're on the field like i get you know if you play if you play scared to be hurt like if you play with the fear of injury, that's usually when you end up getting hurt. Because no, you get tense it. up when you get hit, you do something like it, 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 it's not that happens. Clearly, but clearly, he has no you fear. Have to be you have, but like we know you're not. We know you're not scared, bro. We know you're not scared. You don't got to prove that to us. He said he keeps receipts. Throw them away. Don't burn those receipts. No, we know it's you tough. We know this is why when. This is why I think you asked me on uh, I think you asked me on Thursday if I felt good about what you know to a saying of all this you know and I know like if for the longevity of my playing career here yeah I know like throwing the ball is not away is not something I do well this is why I say yeah, this shit is sweet I believe it when I see it because we've heard this for a year we've heard this for a year now that's not encouraging that's not encouraging it's like. I, I, it's, I don't want to make like a mountain out of a mole here, but like, it's not encouraging in terms of what he just told us throughout the week. Uh, you got to kill that hero ball st- stuff. You think that, you know, usually a big hit like that, it, it, it humbles you a little bit. You got to learn to kill the hero ball stuff. Um, but I mean, he did enough to win. That's really what matters at the end of the day. The losing streak yeah. is over. We yeah. saw signs of that same efficiency that we saw throughout the first three weeks of the season. It's highly encouraging. I would be, even if they beat the Lions next week, if they look like that when they do, I will be equally as critical because I think that would be that would be disappointing. 
It wouldn't be as disappointing as a loss, but it'll be disappointing if they don't torch a league worst defense, you know, with two full weeks, uh, you know, of football activity under your belt. Uh, but no, like, like that's just that's kind of the takeaway here. They did enough to win the game that needs to be recognized. Defense did enough to win the game at the end of the day that needs to be recognized. But there are obvious there are obvious signs of rust that do need to be shaken off before you can really say to his back. I think he'll do it. You know, I think this offense is still one of the top, we'll call it six to eight offenses in the NFL when he is healthy. I think they'll get back to that. But it was not like that tonight. And understandably so. It's been a month, basically, since his last real action. All right. So Tua had an off day today. Did Mike McDaniel have an off day as a coach today? I would say so. I would say so. Uh, There are a couple calls in there that didn't quite make sense. Uh, Obviously, the one that stands out is the the fourth and three. Uh, You know, they ran it. It was essentially it kind of looked like an RPO to uh, to Chase Edmonds up the middle. It went nowhere. It went nowhere. Uh, It was the rare occasion where the next gen model actually suggested kicking the field goal. Uh, I, I pay attention to the decisions on the next gen model every week. They don't tell you to kick the field goal. More often than not, they're telling you to go for it. In this instance, they say kick the field goal. I had a slight edge. I would have gone even with an inconsistent two. I would have. I, I don't mind going for it, but I would have put it in my quarterback's hands, not in my running game. Come on, dude. That running game is not good enough to trust. I mean, no. I and, and, like, and you, and you, by the way, did the two downs before that not convince you of that? <laughs> I thought, you know, and I tweeted, I did, I tweeted it out even, look, either kick the field goal or put it into his hands. Right. Like, that's okay. the, those are the, that's the options, especially on fourth and three, man. It's not like you could just fall forward and get it. Like, you, you, you have to get some push, and that's not something that that line uh, ha- had done during that series. So, it, it didn't make much sense to me. He admitted after the game, he said, look, I had faith in the players at the time, obviously, immediately with how Jason was kicking. Uh, it was a bad decision. You know, it's I take he said I took full responsibility for it. Uh I kicked a field goal. The end of this game is nowhere near as dramatic as it was. And you know, where everybody's going home with their heart rate intact. Uh but yeah, it was uh everybody's got their off days, you know what I mean? Everybody's got their off days. Uh, I thought clearly they had something figured out about this Steelers defense because it started off so hot. They started off so sharp and the creative the creativity in the in the in the route design and the play design and getting players open in open space was right on par with everything that Mike has done uh, through the first six weeks of the season. It just it did feel like Pittsburgh adjusted and Miami did not. And I'm gonna have to watch the film to determine exactly how. Uh, the one adjustment that I did love that Miami made defensively, uh, I'll, I'll, I will credit Josh Boyer for this since they were on. I mean, if one more DB got hurt, they're going to have to call. I mean, who they're going to have to call Chase Simmons to go play corner, or they're going to have to call a receiver to go play corner. Like they were starving uh, for for defensive backs. But I liked the adjustment to going too high with with Fajetalum and 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 Holland and McKinley. Um, you know that well, way. You one, no, you, have no, you have no choice. Fajetalum cannot you, you cover. He didn't have a choice. He did. He was there on a couple of occasions, you know, kind of playing that Brandon Jones role. It just the athleticism to actually make the play wasn't there. It was half. You got half the battle. Yeah, half the battle. He was there. He just was not fast Clayton, enough or could Clayton jump high Fedulum, enough to make the play. Clayton Fedulum is that terrific special teams player that you never really ever want him to play his position because he sucks. Because he's mediocre. Larry Izzo was a beautiful special teams player for the Dolphins. And then he went on to the Patriots and was a fantastic special teams player. He was always your last linebacker. But my brother, if you had injuries and you got to Larry Izzo, you found out why he was a special teams player and never belonged on the field as a linebacker. Fantastic dude. Great special teamer. An absolute cancer as a position player. And there are those kind of players. Clayton Fedulum is that guy. You don't want him playing safety. I'm sorry. It's just, but that's that was going to be one of my follow up questions. What do they do, bro? They're on their seventh uh, and ninth, ninth corners. Now, Brandon Jones, let me tell you something. They've done miracles recovering from cornerbacks and at least 
putting band-aids there. I don't know if you can find somebody to replace Brandon Jones. Look, That's yeah, I, that I worry one's, about. That one's going to be tough because of how critical he is in their pass rush and how often he, frequently he's used as a, as a pass rusher. That is going to be hard to adjust. That's going to be – that is a defense-changing injury, like schematically and philosophically changing injury if – He's out multiple weeks. Uh, I know there's some speculation about what it is. I, I'm not going to speculate on that. We will know in about, I mean, shoot, man, one of the big guns will probably tweet it out tonight if, uh, if, they, if he gets an MRI done and they get a read. Uh, if, you know, if it hasn't been tweeted out already, I'm trying to monitor on my other phone here. Uh, but uh, – yeah, you just you hope to you hope the team gets healthy. You just hope the guys you hope Keon and and Cater get healthy here. Um, I, I'm not sure if either of them can play safety. You probably gonna have to go. You know, you maybe you bring uh, you bring Vron McKinley up permanently from the practice squad, uh, and and hope that he and uh, he and Javon Holland tap into that Oregon Duck chemistry. But um, it, it is. They are. I mean, they're scraping the barrel. That's that's the best way to put it right now. They're scraping the barrel at defensive back, and uh, you know. But I did like the I like the too high one. Obviously, yes, they had to do it, but it also rolled somebody over the top for for Noah. And and one thing that I, I've noticed that Noah does, and I'm not you know, I'm not a DB coach, so don't take this as as Bond. But one thing I have noticed that Noah does is his eyes never leave the backfield. You know, on, on some of his worst reps, his eyes never leave the backfield. He loses track of the men he's lined up across. And even when you're in zone, you still have to be aware of who is in your zone, even if you're not following them step for step. So the big play to Pickens, that's exactly what happened. And it was starting to happen. It was starting to happen on that game ending play as well. Kenny Pickett just threw the ball for no reason. Right. It was a bad pass and he threw it for no reason. And that's a dangerous combo. Uh, and, and Noah, you know, credit to him. He made the play. Uh, he made the play. It was cool to see everybody like hyped for him in the locker room. I know that meant a lot to that kid, uh, man, after that media scrum, watching him just kind of like sit in his locker, not texting, not so, like scrolling through his phone, just kind of like relishing the moment. Again, it was just, it was a cool thing to see. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to be in the locker room for. But, uh, again, he's got help over the top so that when his eyes do, stray it's not a you know it's not a game-changing play you still have help over the top for him so i thought that was critical and that might help him out moving forward i'm with you there um well when uh you look at uh the offensive line uh before i let you go liam eichenberg has naked pictures of who uh I, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. I gotta I, I need to rewatch I need to rewatch this game. I need to look at the pressure counts. Uh I, I didn't think that I didn't think the Dolphins O line was awful tonight. I didn't think they were awful tonight. No, um, I'm just I, I did not say the O line. I said who does Liam Eichenberg have naked pictures of? That's all I'm asking. Because he's not very good. Two more penalties today mediocre play on his part i'm just wondering why does he continue to play why doesn't robert jo is, is robert jones that bad is what i want to know how bad is robert jones hey, again like like we said on thursday like it's it's week we're going into week eight now uh if if you they haven't shown it if if dieter or jones were a better option than eichenberg no, they Dieter's not going to get the chance. D Dieter, Dieter is playing behind Connor. Dieter will not get the chance at guard. It'll be Robert Jones. I'm telling you that. Um, then, okay, so on that side, same point. By the, flip, by the flip side, Brandon Shell, nice little find in the street. That's pretty good. It's pretty good find. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was quality at right tackle. Uh, Greg Little statistically has been the worst tackle in the NFL, or one of the worst tackles in the NFL of a long, you know. It's it's not like uh it's not like what's it called was any better, but uh, it's not like Eichenberg was better in inside, but no. um no Shell has been a quality find um good for him hopefully Austin Jackson can come back soon um sticking with the injury term I don't think Byron Jones I wouldn't expect him to play in week eight again I think we see him at practice for a full week before 
he goes out and plays, and that window has not been activated yet. So uh, I guess that I jumped sides of the ball there a little bit, but just wanted to stick with the injury theme. Right. I got you. I got you. All right. Follow him on Twitter, Marcel underscore LJ. Catch his work there at ESPN. Marcel, we will talk to you later on in the week. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Good night, y'all. You got it. There you go. Marcel Louis Jacques and our MyEdgeDrink.com Miami Dolphins post game report. Don't forget. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.